Okay, how many of you guys, well, I'm not gonna say that because, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. How many of y'all um, been through so many types of hurt and pain? Like of anything, anybody, I don't know. And it's, the, the hurting of it is, it's just the going through it. That's, that's what it is, the going through it. So the title of this is While It Hurts. Um, <clears throat> March 20, well, not March 23rd, but March 3rd, 2019. That was like one of the worst days of my life. Mm -hmm. One of them. But before that, I'm going to back it up. We all went through, go through hardships. We all go through hardship of many kinds, all kinds. And, um, you know, we have been hurt, like I have been hurt, like, you know, been talked about, words been on me, you know, just of people you wouldn't think, you know. But um, I got past that because I stayed in the word. So I was just like, no, like, like at first, you know, I guess when that type of pain hit me, that kind, like, you know, words on me, because this time I couldn't try to fight or talk about nobody. I had to do it the right way, the Amen. God way. Amen. You know, and it hurt me because I couldn't. Be, I was like, God, just five minutes. Like, five minutes, please. And I come, let me go five minutes in the Word and just come right back out. But the, it couldn't be like that. That was like a hard time. So we still pressed through, even for me and my husband. But um, going fast forward, March 3rd, and I'm being so strong right now, and I know that this is going. Amen. March 3rd, 2019, that was the worst, worst day of my life. I was getting ready for church. Me and Kayla, we was getting ready. See, that was getting prepared and everything. And the phone rung, and I was like, it's coming, I'm trying to hear up and get ready. Hello? Oh, uh, yeah, Shawana, um, your daughter and them just been in an accident. I said, you know me, I'm trying to stay calm because I don't want to be in a panic or anything or going back and forth and just try, I'm trying to stay calm. I was like, okay, God, I know everybody are right, everybody are right. So the nurse, I'm talking to the nurse. And she was like, well, they been in a car accident and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, well, where's my daughter? Well, she's right here. She's laying there. Okay, so my mind is just thinking, you know, it goes in the worst. It goes in the worst. So I'm just sitting, but I'm numb, y'all. I'm numb. I'm trying to stay together. So I went over there, and I was like, I'm going to go with my mama. I called CW, and I said, okay, Ty, and been in the rick or whatever and stuff. So I'm going to just go and uh, get my mom, and I'm going to go get the grandmother. And so, when I went to my mom, my, she was cooking bacon, and I said, Mama, I was beating on the door. She said, wait a minute, Tavi, because Tavi, I always go over there just messing with my mom, and bam, 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 just doing it for no reason. But I did it because it was a reason this time. And I said, uh, she said, she wanted what, what? I said, Tavi, I'm being in a rick. She said, like that. So she was burning bacon and everything. I said, Mama, you have to calm down, because if she in a raw, I'll be in a row. So I would Tavi had called me and she was like, Mama, just check on baby J. I said, he ain't with you. She said, No, he not. He had another. I say they ain't never supposed to separate you. They never supposed to separate you. So I'm going to get the grandmother and going and going. And so when we did, I'm praying the whole time. I said, God. I said, you know, you don't give us the spirit of fear. You don't do that. We don't need to be timid. And this, and I said, I know he just sitting up and he just playing with the nurses. But why is they not calling us? Why are they not trying to get to us? So, you know, I called back for time and they was like, well, she's asleep. I said, she can't be asleep when she just been in a wreck. But she just had time. Okay, yeah, okay. So all these feels are going through my body. And these are people that's close to me. This is my daughter. This is my grandbaby. And I said, when I when we got there, I was just pushing gas. I was, he was in Belleville and she was in Burnham, and I was just pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to air up and get there, but just trying to stay calm at the same time. I got there and I was just trying to run to the hospital, and they stopped, and they said he didn't make it. I said I fell to my knees, and I started quoting the scripture about the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
that's what he comes to do. And I just kept saying that. And so um, when I got to my daughter, when you see your child that you give birth to, that you don't want nothing to hurt her, and you see her laying in their bed, and somebody is over her telling her that her child has passed, that was my duty to do that, but they did it. And so happened, God made it to where when I walked in, they was already telling us, so we was there to comfort her. And when I went in, I just saw my child like all banged up and stuff, and I said, God, this can I started playing worship music and everything because I'm still in shock. I'm st I'm, I, it's like in disbelief. I just can't believe it. So I want to go to Jeremiah 31, 25. And like usually when like people pass like beforehand, like before all this ever happened, um, I used to always give people a scripture of Matthew 5 and 4. Like bless of those who mourn. Bless of those who mourn. And I was like, because they are comforted. You can pull that up first. Matthew 5 and 4. Blessed are those who mourn. You would you would feel like, how am I blessed if I'm mourning? Mm -hmm. You know, how am I blessed if I'm mourning? For they are comforted. Who would they be comforted by? You know, when Jesus left, he left a comforter. Mm -hmm. You know, he left a comforter, and that is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Something that people don't even really talk about. They don't talk about him, but he is the one. He is the Amen. main asset into us. Amen. Like the Holy Spirit is what gives us comfort, a counselor. He's the one who um, is the, the intercessor. He's a comforter. And I like that scripture too. Um, John 16, 7. Go there right quick. In the Amplified. However, I am telling you nothing but the truth. When I say it is profitable, good, and uh, expended, advantage, and uh, for you, that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, counselor, helper, mm -hmm. advocate, Amen. intercessor, mm -hmm. strengthener, standby will not come to you and to close fellowship with you. But if you, I mean, but if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Amen. He's the person that give us comfort mm -hmm. when we're in pain. He's the person who guides us and counsels us in the, you know, in the time of pain. And pain is just not grief. It's, you could have been neglected, molested, um, uh, abandoned, like it's all types of sorts of hurt. And it's like the physical and the emotion part of it. And the feels of it, that's what really like get to me because it's like, God, how can I go through this? Like, how can I go through this? So in the midst, I'm still on uh, my grandson. When I had to go back to work, it's like, how can I get through this? How can I get through this? My daughter laying like on, oh, you know, on the couch and stuff. She wouldn't go back in the room, and she didn't, and for a while, and uh, she was just laying on there, or whatever. And this is um, when she lay. She was laying in the on the couch, and my husband said she wanted, and my mom. She was like, she got to get up. She have to get up. Like she have to finish. And this was in her senior year, and she was close. She was almost close to that happened in March, and they graduated in May. And she didn't want to. She didn't want to finish. She didn't want to do anything. She just wanted to lay right there. <laughs> but oh, little did she know who was working in her. <laughs> so when I seen my daughter get up, 
Not only that, my husband, how he taught at the at the funeral was so much strength. I saw that strength. I was like, dang, I was like, God, this type of strength is in it's indescribable. Like I can't, because if I was in the world, I know what I would be going through. I know what I'll be doing. I know that I'll be drinking or trying to just, you know, temporary fix it. You know, just try to temporary fix it. And how I seen his strength, he had to go through it because we live with this baby. We live with my grandson. So when I seen my daughter get up and when she put on her backpack, the CW was like, she going to school. And I was like, oh my God. So the first day she couldn't even like gather herself. She was like, mom, I would just want to go home. And then I guess at school, they were just trying to wear a shirt for her so they could let her know that, you know, they was there for her, but that didn't do good. So she was just like, mom, I just want to go home. I said, and my mom went to go pick her up. I say, you will do good, Top. I said, you're going to get, I said, you're going to get through it. But I went on as a mother, got her a note from school. It was like, I mean, got her a note from the doctor so she could just write out, she could just finish this uh, school year, like, just at home. Nah. Tavi walked across that stage. Amen. Her child, <laughs> she walked across that stage. She passed all her classes and she passed all the, what was it, store? Star test or whatever, she did all that. And that's strength. That's another level of strength. Amen. I was like, oh my God. So this, and my husband was like, you have to go on her temperament. You have to go on her temperament. But I'm watching her. And I say, my daughter, is. she have this, this strength I just can't even explain. All I know is that that is God. That's all I know. So the second worst day of my life was July 14th, 2020. I just talked to my mama. Just talked to her and everything. And they called me, they said, was Shawana? Um, you might as well, you know, kind of, you know, let her go. Let who go? Oh no, see the way we work. <laughs> we don't just let go, we fight, we walk. That's what we do. You can, I can't let my mom go. I just talked to her, so what are you saying? So my mind is trying to recollect of everything that was, you know, everything that they were saying. Everything reopening from March 3rd. And I said, God, come on now. I said, just, I mean, what is this? What is this? So, what is that scripture? Oh, I'm about to suffer. Is it First uh, Peter 5? Minutes? Okay, go there. It's more of a serious type of teaching to me because it's personal. Mm Resist him, standing firm in the faith. And you know we all get down on faith because we don't see what we want to see. Amen. But we have to still believe and still stand on what we know we're going to go through. That's just like when you're working out, and I'm not me. I'm talking about me. <laughs> not me. But you don't believe that to my husband and Mr. Ray. When y'all <laughs> When y'all work out, you know, you know it hurt. You know it hurt when you bench pressing or whatever you're doing. But you see, you want to see the, the 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 results, the end result. But you gotta go through the fields. You have to go through the fields to see the end result. And that's exactly what we have to do. Yes, we do get down on our faith and we don't believe in stuff because it's something that we want to see. We want to see it right then and now. But it's things that's hoped for. It's things that's hoped for because that's the unseen. Um, resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. I'm match that up. Um, go to um, 2 Timothy 4 5 through 6.
like a team. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. Is this 17, 4, or 5, 3, 6? Because that's not what I had. Okay, go to Jeremiah 31, 25. Sorry to take you guys through all this scripture. I know that. <laughs> Mama, okay. <laughs> Give them more. Give them more. Uh, Thirty-one twenty-five. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. And when we going through pain and hurt and situations, grieving and so forth, God telling us all through scripture of his promises of what he will do and will he, you know, he's, he doesn't contradict his word. Amen. You know, and you know, so many people be like, oh God did this, God did, I was, I told my husband, I said, People be saying they be going through a Job Caesar. He said, oh, no, nah, they can't go through no Job Caesar because he didn't even have the Holy Spirit. I said, sure did. I said, oh. I said, oh, my God. I said, he really didn't. So can't nobody go through that. We went through probably parts and areas of Job, but we have not went through the whole thing of Job. And now we have the Holy Spirit, like I told y'all earlier. We have the comforter. We have to believe that. And all these two tragedies that I had, all I had to do was get in his word. I had to stay in his word because if I didn't, I would just let the enemy just come in and come in and just dump and say, oh, you ain't do enough. You ain't pray enough. You ain't. And he tried to do that. He said, you ain't do enough. What you do wrong? Oh, you ain't stay on your face enough. Oh, you ain't spending time with God enough to do those things. I kept flipping through them pages. And every time I read the word, it was giving me peace. And that's what he's supposed to do. He's comforting you. He's healing you because his word says that. His word says that he will heal you. And I, my husband, he gave my daughter this scripture, Psalms 126 and 5. Those who sow in tears will weep, reap with songs of joy. And y'all just read that like, you know how, they was like, you know, you can't be just hearers of the word. You got to be, you know, doers of the word. And the only way we could be doers is if we apply it. That's it. And so you have to let this word come up off that page and you have to get it into your heart. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Yes, you have been through hurt. Yes, you have been through pain. Yes, people have hurt you. Yes, you have been through so much. But if you stay in God's word and you stay focused on his joy and his fulfillment of what he said for you and your purpose, you don't have to never worry about that ever because he is the one. He is the one. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. My daughter has joy. She has joy now. You know, yes, we did deal, deal with this, but we have dealt with that before. So we still know how to deal with tragedies such as this. We still know who we sought after. We know who we continue to seek for. Okay. We're going to go to 
Psalms 145, 21. Now, you know the enemy think we crazy. If we know he didn't just did stuff to us or stole from us or did whatever or took people from us or even whatever it is, my mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. And all you got to do is continue to worship. Worship and praise. Let him speak to you. Yes, God speaks. People say, you know, um, you know, you can't question God. Yes, you can, because how are you going to build that relationship? How are you going to build that relationship? Like, you're going to have to, just like you have an earthly father or your earthly mother. You talk to them, you ask questions, they talk back. Amen. So that's the same thing that exactly how God do. If you know him and you came to his voice, because he speaks to us all the time, uh -huh. but we have so much noise going on because it's us, the enemy, other people, and other people, and other people, it just don't. So we can't, and you know, he don't have to talk loud. He could just say, and if you hear all that, you can hear all your kids and everything. But if you hear, you already know that the who voice that is. You be like, okay, everything else is gonna shut down because you done focused on that voice, yeah. even though that's the that's the quietest and the you know the, the the smallest one, the small still voice that is him. I'm gonna close in a minute. Go to um, Psalms 147. And three, y'all see them in Psalms a lot because you know that's a lot of feels and hurts and emotions. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I felt that because that have happened. Even though I know he's gonna bind up this wound, Yes, I am brokenhearted, but I know he's going to heal me. Amen. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their word, their wound, their wounds. And see, we don't believe his word all the time. Like we, it, it's like we be like, God, you know, we don't see anything. We don't see anything. But if you continue to press in, because it's a lot of times I have got foggy in my mind. And I was like, God, I don't see enough. Like, I don't see what you want me to see. You need to tell me this. You need to tell me that. But God, the way he works, he can give you a word, but you be wanting more. You want something else, like, after that. you like, you just not satisfied. Like, he not going to tell you nothing else until you move on the first word that he told you. Amen. You know, you got to finish that course, and after he tell you that word, then he'll give you the next level. Because you yeah. can't just jump over here and be like, okay, you didn't even finish this task. So you got to finish this one in order for him to, you know, continue to do what he don't. Okay. Romans 8, 18. I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us, revealed in us. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. At the end, regardless of what we're going through, regardless of what it is, we still have a promise. We still have a promise. He said that his glory, the glory that will be revealed in us. Might well get ready for it because I'm ready. <laughs> Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. 
we all have a purpose. We all have a purpose. And it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. If you love him, what would you do? What you supposed to do? If you love God, what would you do? That's it. Oh, we got some good people. We know some stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm going to close in a minute. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. I had this, uh, when my mom had, uh, when she passed, like I had got up one morning, cause you know God gets you up early in the morning, you already know what time it is. It's ready, bald face, ugly face, you just gonna cry, he gonna show you the worst of yourself. That's what you want, so you can be better. Cause when in our weakness, we supposed to get strong. And so I had this vision, I was like, God, you gotta show me. Even like, even though you know that you're hurting and you know God's word, you still gonna get tested. It's like I was in the middle of of like a, a ocean, and the island was right here, and I was like, the water was like right there, and I was like, God, you know, I was looking back, cause like I just want to be safe. Why should I go through it? Like, I just want to be safe, or should I just continue to go? You have showed me so much. Should I give up and walk back to the island to be dry, or should I go back and just go through the motion and stay wet and you will part the seeds for me later? <laughs> I need to know. So I, I felt like I was in the middle, and this is what I was visioning because I was so hurt, like, about my mom, and it was... On top of that, it was my grandson. And I was like, God, you, I'm so mad. I'm so hurt. Even though I know the word, I know what to speak. I know what to say. I know my husband know how to speak over me and all that. But I'm still hurt about it. I was like, God, you got to show me something. You got to tell me something. And that's the vision he gave me. And all I know is I left that island and I kept swimming. Amen. Praise God. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to go back. He showed me too much. When he shows us too much, he tells us too much. Y'all don't know open arms. I'm not saying nobody else. I'm just saying, speaking from my experience, open arms, we get fed. Amen. We grow. Yes. So we know the word. Yes, we it do be fights to come through this door, but we still come through it because that's the growth that we have already experienced. So it's nothing else to do but to walk through them doors and fight through it and go ahead, Amen. get fed again, Amen. walk out them doors, fight. Come back, repeat, just continue to do the same thing. So I just want to let y'all know that in the midst of y'all pain and y'all hurt, I'm telling you, even God give you um, earthly people that's spiritual. Like, you know, don't do things like alone and by yourself. Find a safe haven. Some Somebody that, that, that know the word, not just going to be like, oh, Marie, you'll be okay. You know, we're just going to pray. But no, we're going to war right now. We finna warn you. We finna, we finna get this together. We finna bring the throne down. That's how it's supposed to be. Everybody, like you know, you have that person when you when God comforts you, you comfort the next person because you already know how um, how that feels. You already know. A lot of people can be like, you know, I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna do this. I mean, you know, I send my condol. Like you're just saying it because those are words. I need you to get on your face and be praying on my behalf. Amen. Like, I need that. I don't need nobody to be like, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm like, yeah, you, thank you. That's all I can say because this is, what else is it to say? It's no words. Just let your presence be known. It's no words cannot be. I'm telling you, especially when it comes to grieving. And it's just, I'm speaking on my grieving part. But when other people, like, you can grieve of a person because I didn't even know when Tyra got pregnant, I grieved. I say, you can grieve somebody when they still alive. I didn't even know that. And I, that was something new to me. Like, if your like if your family member, someone you love and you care for, you ain't lost them death-wise, but you lost them because they're lost. Mm -hmm. Like, they're lost, like, walking dead and need to be, their spirit need to rise. You know, you pray for them, you fall on their face. 
I mean, yeah, it might take an ample amount of years or whatever. It might take months, but you will see the manifestation. You will see the manifestation. And me right now, I'm, I know that this is God because I'm not. I'm telling you. Behind closed doors, oh my God, that's why I know those tears. I see when I cry, I see him putting them in jaws because I already know at the end of the day, I know that my joy will be fulfilled. I know that I will have peace. I know that I will have joy like the God. Like I'm telling you, when I see my when I see my son, I get I have joy. Because that's 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 one person that gives me joy. Okay, God, you created him for me. Yes, he have an ample amount of energy. But baby, you mine. <laughs> my daughter, proud of her, moving, making moves. I said, God, you ain't everything that I wanted to do, my daughter doing. I was like, God, please let me move here or let me move there. It would never make me move. It would never. Like, I could never get past it because I'm seeing the manifestation in my daughter. It was for her. The stuff, the drive, the driving and all this stuff, it was for her. I'm cool with it because I want her to be better than me. Way better. <laughs> and when I see my husband, Lord, I thank God, he moved all them gems around. Because, baby, I'm taking all the rocks. Sorry. <laughs> He moved all them rocks around, and I see he made he picked that gym for me because I'm telling you, if I didn't have that man for strength and him lead me to Christ, it'll be a wrap. Because I'm telling you, I fumble the ball all the time. He always say, "Get back up, get back up, get back up." He's always there, and those are my joy. Those three right there is my joy. The other two. <sighs> always be my joy but I know that they together I know that God is teaching them I know that they worshiping I know that they good I know I want to be there where they're at one day and I will if forever miss them I will forever love them but I will continue to move forward and keep being strong so I can be where they're at. I have to still go on with life. I have to continue to still press in. When you see me, my husband, and my daughter laughing and stuff, y'all don't know what we go through and fight. You know, the tears. But when we come out, that strength, because God already gave it to us, and we put the arm of God on, and we be ready to fight. So I just want to let y'all know, just, you know, never let up because the enemy always trying to put uh, his feet on your neck. And you ain't even got to, you ain't even got to because he said, crush the head. He said, crush the head. And that's all you got to do. He ain't got no dominion over us and nothing or nobody that's connected to us. Because we have to say so. We have a word in us. So all we have to do is speak the word. Amen. <laughs> okay. Okay, Facebook, family. I want to pray for anybody that is enduring pain at this moment. Or going through hardships or going through uh you know, self worthless, uh, worthlessness, um, just shame, just all types of pain. You know, I want to speak and pray over you. Lord, I pray over my brothers and sisters. I ask that you give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. I ask that you heal them in those areas, Lord. To give them strength, Lord, where they are weak. We know that you are our comforter. We know that you left a comforter, Lord. And I ask for them to rise up, Lord. Because they will defeat the enemy. 
Lord, I pray that they will be healed. They will grow. They will come closer to you. They would just, if you wake them up in the middle of the night, Lord, let you speak to them, Lord, like never before. So I speak healing now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You want to do the salvation call? Okay, you want to. Anyone that, uh, haven't accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I ask that you accept him. The reason why? Because he's the only answer. Especially everything that is going on in this world today. And he's the only answer. It's either you in or you out. So, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to pray for you. Lord, we welcome this brother or sister in, Lord, that you will help them grow, that you will help them continue to believe, not letting anything seep in, Lord, but by them changing their lives today, Lord, I ask that you continue to shed everything up that's not of you and continue to let them just be king to your, your voice, Lord. Let them know of you. Let them know who you truly are so you can manifest and work through their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen.